Today using Apple Motion, I'm gonna show you how to create the super eight millimeter effect for Final Cut Pro. Then at the end, I'm going to show you how to take it to the absolute next level by using Film Convert Nitrate, the amazing sponsor for this video. Go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. From there, select the Final Cut title. Then going to the top right, you can set your preset at whatever you like. Today, I'm gonna work in 4K. Then I recommend you set your frame rate to whatever you typically work with for your videos. So I usually edit at 2398. After that, coming down to the duration, we're gonna wanna set this to an extremely long amount of time. Something longer than anybody would possibly use for the effect. So I'm gonna set this to 3600 seconds, which is a full hour. After that, we can push open. The first thing we'll wanna do is of course, delete the type text here layer. After that, I'm going to rename this original group to be our background. Then I'm going to right click and create a new group, which we will call overlay. Then I will push command I to import that overlay and locate it here in Finder. I found this specific overlay on Envato Elements, but there are hundreds of free options on the internet. I will, however, have a link to this one from Envato if you're interested. It just requires a subscription to Envato Elements. After that, we can go ahead and push import. Selecting that overlay, we can go over to our inspector and find our properties. In here, we will locate the blend mode and change it from normal over to either darken or multiply. I personally like how multiply looks even better. Now for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to import some footage so you can clearly see what the effect is doing, but this step is not required. Go ahead and select your title background. Then coming over to the left hand side, find the position parameter, right click on it, and then select add parameter behavior, wriggle. The wriggle parameter is going to lightly shake our video footage, which is a great way to recreate the gate weave effect you will see on old film. The amount currently is set to 100, which is far too high for the effect that we want. So what we will do is click on this 100 pixels and change it over to just one. After that, change the apply mode from add over to add and subtract. This enables the effect to work both in the positive realm and in the negative realm, giving it a little bit more room to work with. Coming further down, locate the noisiness parameter. Go ahead and drag that all the way up to one. So now we should have a nice subtle shaking on our video footage, which is looking pretty nice. With your title background selected, go over to the left hand side and locate the crop settings. Go ahead and enable that, then click on show to expand your options. Finding the left parameter, go ahead and shrink that edge all the way up until it's really close to this perforated edge. This is important because if we don't do that, later on in this video, you'll see that there's some text that flies through. And sometimes because of the blend mode that is attached onto this overlay, the underlying footage is going to bleed through. So by cropping off that edge, we will not have that issue any longer. Now that we have that crop, we're gonna select the background group. Now, rather than creating clones directly from this title background, we're gonna wanna create them from the group because the animation is found inside of the group. So by creating a clone from that group, it's going to retain that wriggle animation that we applied earlier. Selecting that group, go ahead and push K. This is going to create a clone layer which receives any of the additional effects we apply onto that original layer. Taking that clone layer, go ahead and just drag it straight up until you hit that perforated edge. With that clone layer selected, push Command D to duplicate it. We don't need another clone layer, we just need a duplicate layer. Go ahead and select that clone layer and drag that all the way down to the bottom of your video and find that perforated edge once more. So now you should have a duplicate on the top and on the bottom. One thing that's going to be very important is for this perforated edge to continually loop. Selecting that eight millimeter Kodak film that we downloaded, we can go on over to the left side and find the timing panel. Let's go ahead and expand that, then find the end condition button. We'll change it from none over to loop. So now this will continually loop at the end of the video. Finally, selecting that title background, we'll go over to the image settings and I'm going to push clear so that this doesn't show up in Final Cut Pro. This is also going to enable me to extend out this title background to the end of our project duration. Now that we have that all set up, we can push Command A to select all of the layers, then come to the very end of our timeline. We're gonna push O to set an out point which will extend everything out to that full animation duration. Finally, coming to the very last frame, push Shift M to add a green marker. Double clicking on that, we're gonna change the type from standard 
over to project loop end. Then we can push OK. The reason I set this to be an hour duration is because if we had this video file inside of our project in Final Cut Pro, it would either stretch out to the entire duration of the title and it wouldn't loop, or if we set it to loop, it would have another problem where it's going to continually loop the title background layer. So the underlying footage is just gonna keep looping from the start point of the title. By setting it to an hour, it is far longer than anybody is going to need this effect. However, it does come with an issue of this title is always going to be an hour long when we add it to our timeline, and we definitely don't want that. So there is a way to retain this project loop end at the end of the hour while still only being 10 seconds when we drop it on the timeline. To do that, click on this clock icon. You'll see that that gives me this time code here. Double click on that time code and then just type in 10 zero zero so that should be 10 seconds and zero frames then i'll push enter and you'll notice now that my project has been shortened down to 10 seconds but what's really important is all of the layers are still going to be that hour-long duration which is really valuable finally let's jump inside of our wriggle parameter and publish the amount settings so we can publish how much of that gate weave effect we have then we can go into our 8 millimeter Kodak film, go to the properties and publish the blend mode. So if we want to change that over to something like darken, we can do just that. And finally, there is one last important factor to really sell this as a super 8 millimeter film. And that is the frame rate. I am far from a film expert, but in my research online, it said that super 8 millimeter cameras shot generally at 18 frames per second. Selecting the title background, we'll go up to filters, then go down to time and select strobe. Now the strobe effect is the number one effect that breaks stuff over in Final Cut Pro. So if you're having issues with stuff not rendering properly, it's probably the strobe effect. The strobe effect emulates different frame rates that you can set by using this slider. So right now it's set to 15 frames per second. Let's go ahead and set that to 18 frames per second. If this breaks anything in Final Cut Pro for you, all you need to do is push Control R to render out that portion of the video and it should work properly. Now that we've set that to 18, let's go ahead and click on this down arrow and select publish so that we can set the exact frame rate that we want in Final Cut Pro should we need it for a different project. Now that all those parameters are published, I'm gonna push Command S to save slash publish and that will set up the template here. And we can just call this the super eight effect. Then we can put this in whatever category we like. I will throw this into tutorials and push publish. Going to Final Cut Pro, we can locate the Super 8 effect that I just created and drag that down onto the timeline. And if we push play, we can start to see how this video has that Super 8 look. It's got a low frame rate, it's got the nice perforated edge, and it's duplicated up on the top and bottom, and it has a very nice slight gate weave effect to it. So this in itself is pretty cool, and I spent a whole bunch of time trying to figure out the perfect coloring scheme to get this looking as closely as possible to Super 8 film, but I just was not nailing the result. And then I remembered I have an incredible plugin called Film Convert Nitrate that could do this all for me. And so I reached out to them and they said they would love to sponsor this video. So really quickly, I'm gonna show you how to level up this particular effect by using Film Convert Nitrate. All I'm going to do is drop in an adjustment layer. You can get this from pretty much anywhere. I'll try and have a download link to this down below. Then we're going to apply Film Convert Nitrate onto that adjustment layer making sure it's underneath the Super 8 effect. Now that we've done that, we can jump on over into our video inspector and see this open controls button. I'll click on that and that will give us a whole bunch of different options for really dialing in this particular effect. The default is of course default and this is just a basic sRGB video look but we can dial this in to get it looking as accurate as possible to an actual film camera. To do that, we'll change the make from default over to Sony, which is the camera I shot on, and I shot it on the Sony A7S Mark III. After that, we can select the profile. This is set to movie. I shot this in S-Log S-Gamut 3.Cine. And you'll notice that I did not need to apply any sort of conversion LUT because the conversions are applied already inside of Film Convert Nitrate, which is really, really nice. And it makes it look so good. Moving a bit further down, you'll see that we have this exposure slider. And if I drag this down, you'll see how I am retaining all of this highlight detail here, which is so nice because this exposure parameter 
is being applied before the transform LUT as any color grading software should do. So I love having that feature, but I'm gonna go ahead and bring my exposure back to where it was. You can of course dial in the temperature, so if you wanted a warmer look, you could get that set here. You could dial in your tint if you needed more magenta or green. But then underneath that is the film stock options, and I love this. I'm somebody who really doesn't understand film all that well. I love how it looks, but I don't know how to get that look perfectly. And so Film Convert Nitrate does all of the heavy lifting for you. They have created so many different profile presets for you to use to get it looking exactly like film. Taking this film stock, we can go through and try all of the different options and find the one that really matches the look we are after. Now, I personally like this Fujifilm 8543, which is a really great look for this particular video that I'm working on. Then underneath that, we can adjust stuff like the film color. So if you don't want it to take quite so much of the color from that film, but maybe you want it to be treated in the same exposure type, you can dial that in right here. Underneath that is the grain strength. And I love this because the grain looks so realistic compared to other plugins. You could of course dial it way up if you wanted, but I'm actually gonna bring it down just a little bit. Then going down a little bit further, there's these film size presets. And this is where the magic happens to make this look exactly like Super 8 millimeter film. Right now it is set to 35 millimeter full frame, but I want this to be all the way down to Super 8. This is going to properly apply some softening filters that look just like film, as well as get the right grain response. If I go ahead and zoom way in on my video, you'll see how it's got this nice soft filmic look to it, which I am loving. Another really powerful feature is you can dial in the exact grain curve. This allows you to set how much grain is in the dark parts of your image or in the highlights of your image. So if there is a very specific filmic look you are going after, you can dial that all in right here with this grain curve. Underneath that, you have stuff like your color wheels and your curves. I love using the curves to get just a nice quick S curve and it's so nice having it all built directly inside of this plugin. Finally at the bottom is your levels so if you want to crush your blacks or bring down your highlights you can do that all from these sliders. So there is a ton of functionality built directly inside of this plugin so that you don't need to keep jumping over to Final Cut Pro's coloring tools. So now that we have dialed in our perforated edge, we've brought in our gate weave, and finally we've applied that film convert nitrate plugin, we can go ahead and see how closely this looks to Super 8 millimeter film. And I am absolutely loving the result. In my opinion, this looks very accurate to Super 8 millimeter film. Now again, I am not an expert in the film world, but this looks amazing to me and really gives me that nostalgic feel that I would be after with an edit like this. So if you're interested in Film Convert Nitrate, I do have a discount code down below as well as some links that will help out the channel. If this video was helpful to you in any way, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and you may wanna check out this video where I show you five powerful built-in effects with Apple Motion. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.